Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Cocktail Mechanics. This week, I'm going to be teaching you all about our faithful friend, the Hawthorne Strainer. Fun thing about the Hawthorne Strainer is it was originally known as the Julep Strainer, which has now become to be its own entity, but the Hawthorne Strainer only really coined its name when the Hawthorne Bar in Boston, USA brought it out. So, with this strainer, what you'll notice about it is it looks like this and it has a spring attached to it. Woo! Um, one thing you'll notice about these strainers is that they have little ears on them. Some of them will have four ears, some of them will have two ears. This actually came out, the ears are a new feature of the Hawthorne strainer that didn't come out until quite recently. If you go to antique markets to find a Hawthorne strainer, number one, you'll usually find the word Hawthorne written on the strainer and it won't have any ears and it will look a bit like this. So you have a lovely round spring and no ears. So what can happen if you don't have enough control is, and if they're quite small, it will just kind of like fall through or they can fall off your gla glass. It can fall off your tin. But the thing about these is the ears is they keep it nice and smooth on. So you can push as hard as you want. It won't fall down. You have a lot better grip. So loads of people prefer to use eared Hawthorne strainers. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the springs here. Springs, which you attach like this, they will keep your large ice cubes and large ice shards out of your drinks. But sometimes they're not as accurate as you'd want them to be. So what I've found out over the years is that bartenders like to double up on their springs sometimes even use three springs. So what they'll do is they'll double up, they'll grab the strainer and they will thread it through like this. So it can be a little bit tricky to do. So you wanna half thread it on one side and half thread it on the other. And once you've got the majority of it on, you just push it down. So as you can see, it's a lot bulkier here and it will reduce the amount of ice shards that come out of your shake and drink. So some people will use this method instead of fine straining a drink. I personally prefer to fine strain, which is using the little sieve. Uh, when I use a Hawthorne strainer, I always find it super handy, but I also really like rigging strainers as well. So the Hawthorne strainer, its origin story is it actually derives from Chinese tea strainers. And because this has been around for like, well, it came out in the 1800s, so it's like almost 220 years old now, it's become a staple of the bartending industry and probably one of the most useful tools in our arsenal. When it comes to straining, you can use these. Um, some people even like to just use that to strain their drinks. Obviously you have the julep strainer, which is a little circular strainer with holes in it and it covers the whole thing. It doesn't have ears on it though. And then obviously you have the fine strainer, which is one of these. These are a fine strainer. It's also known as a tea strainer. I like to call it a mini sieve, little mini sieve. So like we said, this is actually originally trademarked and patented as a julep strainer. It only really got called a Hawthorne strainer because of the Hawthorne Cafe in Boston, the USA. Because they would write Hawthorne on all their strainers, it became a bartending necessity to have this strainer. And it still is to this day. You need one of these strainers to make a great drink. It's just, it's one of the best tools out there. And for most bartenders, it's pretty much our, our bread and butter when it comes to bar tools. So like obviously you've got your Hawthorne strainers, your bar spoons, your bar knife, and your, your tins which we went over last week. Have a look at it when you're behind the bar or if you're making a cocktail at home and you have a couple of strainers, just get the springs and put them together and see the difference it makes. I know some bartenders who like to put four springs together. A lot of springs. A lot of springs, woo! You know, you could make a giant Hawthorne strainer with a slinky if you really wanted to. We should try that one day. When you're looking for a good Hawthorne strainer, there are some great places you can go, like uh, Bossy, if I'm pronouncing that right, if I'm not, I'm sorry. They make amazing bespoke Hawthorne strainers and other fine strainers. They're a Spanish company. They make everything themselves out of stainless steel in their like, little workshop. It's gorgeous. Go to Cocktail Kingdom. The link will be in the description below. You can go to Cocktail Kingdom as well, Amazon too. But basically, if you wanna, wanna start off with something quite nice, you want something that's a bit weighted, a bit heavy, I recommend the two ear Hawthorne strainer, not the four ear ones. So get, so spend a bit of money. I'd say spend on a good Hawthorne strainer, a really nice one, I'd, I'd spend about 25 quid. And if you really are feeling fancy, you can spend up to like 150 quid on something super bespoke. This is a bespoke strainer. This is the Jägermeister strainer. Um, I cannot remember the name of the company, but they are based in Russia and it is a gorgeous strainer. And this is a Hawthorne strainer without any ears. So it's a proper classic one. And you can see the spring goes all the way around the strainer, which is absolutely fantastic. And then you have the lovely Jägermeister logo cut out of it. Have a little look online. We'll put some links in the description and you can check out and find out what works for you. But honestly, this is probably one of the most important tools in your bartending arsenal. 
Anyway, guys, I'll see you next Wednesday. Let me know about your Hawthorne strainers. If you've got any questions, just ping us a message on our Instagram or our email. I'm excited to see what you get for yourselves. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I, I, I do own a machete.